everybody. So my name is Jennifer Gunter and we are going to be talking about confusion, Alzheimer's, dementia, and kind of covering that today. Um, so while you guys were coming into class, you should have got your laptops out and completed this bell ringer here through quizzes. And then um, for time's sake, I'm not going to play this short YouTube video, but it's about a minute long and it just kind of shows um, a little animation of kind of a breakdown into what the family and, and patient struggling with dementia go through and how these signs can kind of start presenting themselves. Um, so that's my attention grabber, just the short little video to get everybody on board with what we're discussing today. So today we are going to talk about caring for the resident who is confused. So our first learning objective, um, you guys are going to complete a graphic organizer outlining the four different stages of dementia that we're talking about today so that you're able to accurately describe the signs and symptoms of each stage. And then when we're done with our lecture and our guided note taking, as a class we're going to go through an activity um, where we demonstrate the appropriate communication techniques to talk with people who are confused. So what are some common causes of confusion? UTIs, change in medication, great answers. So I've got a lot of um, things listed out here. Um, there can be a lot of different causes of confusion. And as we kind of work our way through our lessons, we'll talk more in depth about Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis and different things, but all of these things can contribute to a change in a person, person's mental status and cause them to be confused. One major takeaway that I want you guys to remember from today's discussion is that confusion is not consider, considered a normal part of aging. So this is a big question that I've seen on our state CNA exam. No matter how old a person is, it is not normal for them to be confused by the state's standards. Um, it's always either a cause of something, whether it be a chronic disease or an acute disorder, meaning a short-term thing. Um, but, and then this was just a little graphic showing um, different brains. But um, I just want you guys to keep this in mind. If you see any test questions, um, say Mabel is a 99-year-old resident in the nursing home and she does not recognize her daughter. Is this a normal part of her aging process? The answer is no. So delirium versus dementia, what do you think the difference is between the two? Great answer. So delirium is acute and can come on suddenly um, and hopefully it's reversible. So hopefully you can figure out the culprit that has caused that acute confusion and you can remedy that. Um, dementia is a slow onset and it becomes progressively worse as we work through the different four stages of that confusion. This is another big one, especially for you all in this class. Um, the emphasis in dementia care should focus on the person and not the disorder. So these people can become very agitated. They're not always the nicest, but that doesn't mean that them as a person are not kind. This is the disease and they are confused and they are not aware of what they're doing. So we must always treat them with empathy, kindness, and just always know that no matter how they're acting, it's because of that they don't know what's going on. Um, sometimes when you're caring for a dementia patient, you might feel yourself start getting upset. You might have to take a break and step away for a little bit and that is okay. You just never want to react to their behavior because they don't know what they're doing. So that's always a really um, important thing to keep in mind. So how do people with dementia communicate? Some people in the early stages of dementia are able to communicate what they need with you. Um, some in the later stages might use metaphors and similes. So what kinds of things using metaphors and similes could they say? 
Great. Okay. Um, listening to their speech may give you a way to understand what they are trying to tell you. So if they're talking about bathrooms, but they haven't come out and said, I need to go to the bathroom because they're confused and aren't sure how to tell you that, sometimes you just have to go through the checklist like you would with a child. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need to use the bathroom? Those kinds of things, because they can't always um, communicate that with you. So you have to kind of anticipate what they could be needing as their caregiver. Causes of behavior changes. So what are some environmental factors that you think that could cause a person's confusion to become worse? So what are environmental changes? So that is most often a change in where they are. So what would be an example of a change in where a person with dementia would go? Exactly. They could go from the nursing home to the hospital if they have something going on that they're not able to treat at the nursing home. And this can greatly exacerbate um, a person with dementia's confusion because they have different caregivers, they're in a different environment, um, it can be noisy and more stressful than what they're used to with the IV poles and the bright lights, people coming in and out. This can really exacerbate people's confusion. There can be other environmental changes too, um, like a really bad storm, things like that. But I, that's the main thing that I, that I want you guys to keep in mind. If you do go to work at a hospital or a nursing home one day, um, that change in environment is a really big deal to people with um, dementia or any kind of confusion. So now if you guys want to click on this link, that'll take you to our graphic organizer. And I want you guys to fill that in as we go along to break down the different stages of dementia. So stage one, these are more mild things. Um, it's gonna just be gradual, short-term memory loss, little forgetful things, um, some difficulty concentrating, not great judgment. They may not wanna go out and do activities that they used to do. Um, they might be starting to get kind of moody, like you've seen in the video that we showed at the beginning of class, kind of just short and snippy with people who are, they usually wouldn't really be acting like that. Um, and they might blame others for little mistakes or problems because they may not remember that they in fact did those things. Stage two, um, a lot of similar symptoms from stage one, but they are progressively getting worse. Um, so it's more obvious memory deficits. You guys might have discussed something several times in a week and they're just not remembering day to day. They're not doing their normal routines. Um, they may have never forgot you know, a son or daughter's birthday and all of a sudden this year they haven't remembered any of those. Um, losing personal belongings, which can correlate to this one above. They can accuse people of stealing because they don't remember where they put their stuff. Again, you have to be careful of things like this because there are bad people out there that could be taking advantage of elderly people. Um, you know, just increasingly agitated. It kind of goes from being moody in stage one to more agitated in stage two. So in stage three, things have definitely gotten significantly worse. They cannot function alone. They are needing assistance with all their ADLs. And what does ADL mean? Great, activities of daily living. And what are some ADLs that you as a CNA might help these patients with? Feeding, bathing, physical therapy. Yep, physical therapy will help them with those kinds of things. Um, so really any activity of daily living that they might need assistance with, you guys are gonna be there supporting them and helping them with those. Oh, another major one was these catastrophic reactions. What that means is they very get very, very upset um, and you know it's just kind of a big breakdown about something and just the buildup of confusion and frustration leads them into that. And stage four, um, very sad, it's our terminal stage. So incontinence, what does that mean? Great, um, no longer have control of their bowel and bladder. 
they're having difficulty swallowing, um, that leads into our weight loss. Um, so a lot of times they have no appetite, they're also having a lot of difficulty swallowing. A lot of patients in the further stages of dementia only want to eat sweet stuff. Um, so, you know, that's not giving them a good nutritional balance in their diet. Um, they get very susceptible to infection because of a lot of the different factors that play here. So managing severe behaviors. So I kind of talked about this a few minutes ago, but the main thing you can do is prevent. So we want to prevent that big breakdown. We don't ever want to argue with the patient. We want to show lots of empathy. We want to speak calmly. Um, I put quietly here, but I kind of maybe want to rephrase that. Um, if they have trouble hearing, you want to speak at a volume they can hear you, but you don't want to be yelling at them at all. Um, you definitely want to show that you are interested in what they have to say. And this leads us into our validation therapy and reality orientation communication techniques. And this is how we're going to talk with the people who are confused. So our validation therapy, this is based off of the reasons listed here, but the main thing is that people cannot be forced to change their behavior and must be accepted non-judgmentally. So you're staying calm, you're staying collected, um, and you're just accepting what they have to say. A lot of times this is for your people who are very severely confused and you are not trying to reorient them. You are just accepting what they say and keeping them safe. And then our reality orientation, um, you're trying to prevent that severe confusion. You're working to reorient them to person, place, and time. Um, so, <clears throat> for example, if Mr. Smith is in the hospital for a hip replacement, he normally lives at home, he's not confused, and you come into work tonight and he says, where am I? I'm not sure where I am. I'm trying to get into my bedroom. You're going to say, well, Mr. Smith, you're here at the hospital. You just had your hip replacement. Da -da. And hopefully, by kind of reminding the gentle reminders, you're going to reorient them to where they are and... Um, and kind of get them back to their normal level of orientation. So I just put this reference here. This is our CNA manual where all this information came from. So now we are going to move on to our activity where we practice through the different scenarios of, you know, real life scenarios of CNAs that you guys will go through when taking care of people who are confused and we can practice whether we're gonna use that validation therapy technique or the reality orientation technique. And we're gonna partner up and, and work on that. And we will also have time to complete your graphic organizers at the end of class. Um, for any of you guys who didn't get those all the way filled in, so don't worry about that. Um, so today for our lecture, we talked about the causes of confusion. We broke down those four stages of dementia and we are going to practice those communication techniques. Thank you.